So we will stand up all together, raise our eyes up to the sky with faith and love in our hearts. We will embark. Oh, oh, oh. We will give. Hello Last Day Saints, Kenzie Virtual, the woman entertainer here, the most inspirational woman in all of Asia here today. Back once again, it's Wednesday and it's reactions time. Top 10 reasons Peter Griffin should be in prison. Ooh, goody. Now with this top 10 list created by Watch Mojo, they are going to be using footage from the show Family Guy itself. So credit for the footage goes to Fox, who own the rights to Family Guy and to watch Mojo for creating this list. So, here we go. I'm just kidding, of course I'm not gonna cover the 10 reasons uh, Peter Griffin should be in prison. Of course I'm not gonna cover that. Let's go into reacting to a review of uh, a WWE event, Extreme Rules, um, on Sunday night. Let's uh, see how the review goes. And our friends over at Wrestle Talk. Support Wrestle Talk. Follow, Follow us on, on Twitter. A huge WWE star returns. Kevin Owens channels his inner Mick Foley, and Pittsburgh cares more about counting than Seth Rollins versus Dolph Ziggler. I am Luke Owen. Vote in the poll above my head to give your thoughts on this show using our brand new pay-per-view rating system. Ooh. Best of both worlds, great purview, thumbs in the middle, meh purview, and worst of both worlds. This is WWE Extreme Rules 2018 in about four minutes on the kickoff show Andrade Cien. Where's the bell? They normally they normally go uh, insert uh, event here in about four minutes. Ding ding ding! They normally do that. And Almas beat Sinkara in a short match, and Sanity defeated New Day in a tables match that wasn't as fun as it really should have been. The show kicked off mm. proper with the B team capturing the Raw Tag Team Championships from the Deleter. You're joking. Did no? Did I just did I just hear that correctly? Should have been. The show kicked off proper with the B team capturing the Raw Tag Team Championships from the Deleter of Worlds in a four minute nothing match. Finally, Curtis Axel and Bodaz actually have a tag team title read to their name. About time they had, a, about time they managed to get a title run under them. I don't like what they're doing with them though because of their. Previous association with the Miz and as the Miz Taraj, which was ridiculous, might I add. And Finn Balor rolled up Baron Corbin in a short bout that did nothing for either guy. We haven't got off to the best of starts here, folks. Yeah, think this is what they do on a week-to-week -week basis. In a backstage interview, Kurt Angle said that he's been trying to negotiate Brock Lesnar's next title defense, but he's refusing to fight anyone in WWE. To break kayfabe, ladies and gentlemen, that just shows you how much Brock Lesnar doesn't care about the business. Angle then revealed that Lesnar must show up on Raw tonight or he will be stripped of the Universal Championship. Why not strip him now? This got the loudest pop of the night, so WWE have at least been able to book Brock Lesnar to get a reaction. Which is the total opposite for the formerly really over Asuka. They use NXT call-ups as main roster cannon fodder. They do so well in NXT, and Vince goes, Nope, let's have a look at these NXT call-ups. Ask her, who's this? Bury her under this Barbie doll, Carmella, damn it! Solid Vince McMahon impression, Kenzie Retro. James Ellsworth was locked in a shark cage for her match against Carmella. Yeah, they have had a fetish for, um... Shark cages over the past couple of years. But immediately started dropping weapons to the Princess of Staten Island. Simply have him be banned from the arena. Nothing worked, so Ellsworth Jimmy the lock to escape. It might be handy if you, the master of unlocking, take it with you. <laughs> That, that is, okay, 
That was clever. That was clever. But found himself hanging upside down for a funny visual. But like a complete idiot, Asuka got distracted, allowing Carmella to throw her into the cage. And, and this is why I hate how uh, WWE is being booked. And pin her. Asuka is now 0 and 3 in championship matches, has been beaten up by Carmella week in, week out, and lost their two pay per view matches in a row. Asuka had zero heat when beating up James Ellsworth after the show, and I can't for the life of me work out why. No heat. Um. No heat simply because. No one. Cares about Ellsworth. Nobody cares about Carmella to either. Time for me to do a how WWE should have booked again at some point. Shinsuke Nakamura low blow Jeff Hardy before the bell. In oh boy, he's had a tendency for low blows. Just ask AJ Styles. In a United States Championship match and hit the Kinshasa for the win in a matter of seconds. Brand Seriously? Seriously. You're gonna have Shinsuke Nakamura SQUASH Jeff Hardy? Right, hang on. How long was that squash? Hang on. Hang on. Events. Results. Seven, eight. Eight, eight. Look at that. Six seconds. Shinsuke Nakamura squashing Jeff Hardy in six seconds. Andy Orton then made his return to WWE, seemingly challenging Nakamura for a US title feud. He then took a page out of Nakamura's playbook by low blowing Hardy like a total dick. Was it? Uh, wouldn't that make Orton a heel? Nakamura's the heel. It's a heel turn. It sure felt like one, but knowing this company, it probably wasn't. Mm -hmm. Kevin Owens tried to escape his cage match with Braun Strowman as soon as the bell rang, but Strowman dared Owens to fight him instead. Owens handcuffed Braun to the ropes, but the Monster Among Men broke free and chased him up the cage. Because it's the Monster Among Men for crying out loud. And 20 years after the Mankind Undertaker Hell in a Cell match, Strowman launched Owens off the cage through the announcer's table for a spectacular visual. Strowman then laughed at Owens being stretched out like a total heel. Earlier in the night, the Bludgeon Brothers took out the knee of Kane backstage, meaning Daniel Bryan had to face them in a two-on-one handicap match, which was actually quite good. And Kane later came out limping to help his beardy friend. But even though the company had the outs of Kane losing, as he was badly injured and barely able to walk, Daniel Bryan took the pin for a Bludgeon Brothers retention. Why? Do they still not want Daniel Bryan to be at the top? Here's a shocker, Roman Reigns versus Bobby Lashley was not the main event of this show. Well that's a start. I'm sure that means the fans will actually cheer whoever is in the main event, as WWE are giving them exactly what they've been asking for. Anyway, this match went a bit like this. Boo! Boo! Boring! Boring! Rusev Day! Rusev Day! Can you just tell from that alone, they don't care about Bobby Trashley and Roman... ...and No Man Games. Those are from JD from New York, by the way. I didn't come up with those. 
Bobby won with a spear. Ronda Rousey was at ringside for Alexa Bliss's Extreme Rules match against Nia Jax and jumped over the guardrail when Mickie James kept interfering. This was easily the best part of the match and about the only thing the crowd were actually into. But even she couldn't help Jax regain her title when Bliss DDT'd Nia onto a chair for the win. By this point of the show, the crowd was spent, which was evident when the chants for Rusev Day were louder in the Roman Reigns match than they were in Rusev's actual match against AJ Styles. This really picked up by the end with some decent and near falls, but no one bought into Rusev winning. Proved correct when Styles pinned him after a phenomenal forearm. The For goodness sake, Vince, give Rusev a break! Give him a title run! Give him a run at the WWE title for once! These two really could put on a much better match. Yep, that's right. The hottest guy in the company, Seth Rollins, main evented this pay-per-view against Dolph Ziggler instead of Roman Reigns and Bobby Lashley. So you'd think the crowd would be happy, right? Nope. Nope. Sadly, they were more interested in counting down with the clock like it was the Royal Rumble, which they did at around the six minute mark and continued to do so for the next 24 f***ing minutes. Yeah, I know what I'm rating the show. The counting got so bad that WWE even removed the clock from the big screen. But that backfired when portions of the crowd started counting down from 10 at random points in the match. <laughs> you will never silence the fans. You underestimate the power of the WWE fans. I will never refer to them as the universe again. What I'm saying is that no one was really into this. Which is a shame, as it was actually pretty decent. Even if it did make Dolph look like a total chump. He went down 2-0 in the first few minutes, and then Drew McIntyre got him dq to go 3 and nothing. Dolph used this, however, to regain 3 pinfalls in a matter of minutes. Really? 3 each? Wow. And then 4-3 shortly thereafter. What?! Seth had a great series of near falls as he desperately tried to tie up the score, which he did with just minutes to spare. He hit the stomp, but the buzzer went before he could get the pinfall. Kurt Angle channeled his inner gorilla monsoon and announced they were going to sudden death, which was over quickly when Dolph used the zigzag off a McIntyre distraction for the win. Oh, for goodness sake. The crowd did not care about this match whatsoever. Based on their reactions, the next contender to Brock Lesnar should be the clock. Extreme Rules 20... <laughs> <laughs> the 18 felt like exactly what it was a filler pay per view before SummerSlam. There were a couple of good moments towards the end of the show, but the majority of the baby faces looked like total idiots. It was far too long, and the biggest reactions went to Ronda Rousey, who wasn't in a match, and Brock Lesnar, who wasn't there. Extreme Rules 2018 was a mere purview. Yeah, I beg to differ on that one. I beg to differ. That was the worst of both worlds. Right. Well. Well, let's just say... My allegiances with the WWE are gone and will never be seen again. Anytime soon, anyway. What will... What I will be doing, though, is New Japan. That's right. I'm joining the Bullet Club. Not actually joining the Bullet Club, but just roll with it. G1 Climax got underway on uh, Saturday. So, I'm going to be catching up with that. Anyway. I mean... Why would I want to waste my time with WWE at this point anyway? All I have to do is go to these reviews and watch the reactions. And that's it.
Well, anyway, that's it uh, for my reaction today, folks. If you enjoyed what you saw, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptized into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the Latter-day Saints notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. Uh, I've got my two for Tuesdays on the left, which is the Rocket League NBA playoffs. And on the right, my dedicated reactions playlist. In the meantime, uh, throwback Thursdays tomorrow. It's a bonus video of my failed level run, my failed uh, run throughs of levels from Tarzan. And then on Friday, it's the return of Kenzie Retro's top 10s, the official return with my top 10 games of the year of 2018 so far. Until then, I'll see you guys again very soon. I'm going to get this top 10 recorded. Because by the time the top 10 goes live, I'm already going to be in Dublin. So I'll see you guys when I get back from Dublin. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out. Stay faithful as always.